Okay, so today is this guy's 17th birthday. My first son, Quinn. And I remember it for a bunch of reasons besides he's my first son. <laughs> of course I gotta remember. Uh, when he was born, he was actually born during uh, SARS. And we were in the hospital. Uh, he, he got sick. 24 hours after he was born, we realized he wasn't breathing well. And they immediately pushed him into uh, an intensive care unit. And we stayed in the hospital for 10 days. My, my wife's, my in-laws, no one could visit during SARS. So like this pandemic, it was a drop in the bucket compared to the pandemic that's going on right now. And uh, so he just, like I said, he just turned 17. So it makes me think about that time and all the measures that were taken back then. But it also reminds me of uh, some uh, landlord type of tenant lessons I learned during that time. So when the day he was due, um, I was showing one of the apartments and it was, it was the second uh, house that we bought. It was the one that was attached to the first house, we had to deal with that real estate agent that owned both of them. So we ended up buying two over the course of a year. But it, I was showing this apartment on the day he was due and I'd scheduled all of these uh, appointments for people to come and look at the, uh, at the apartment. And um, I remember specifically telling them that I had my phone. I think there was cell, there were cell phones and it was a big clunky phone. Um, I remember telling the people as I was showing it to them, I said, uh, just so you, you know, um, my wife is due today. So in the middle of the showing, if, uh, I get a call and she, you know, her water broke or something, I just gotta go. So we may have to cut the showing short. And I remember I didn't tell everybody this on that day, right? As I was showing it. And, I, and I'd scheduled these appointments, like, I would, when people would call, I would, you know, we'd say, what's a, what time can you make it? And they would tell me a time and I, you know, it was a weekend. So I'd work around their schedule. And, um, you know, I have like five appointments or six appointments in a day going at different times. Now, the other thing about that was luckily for us, we lived right next door. So, well, two doors down or three doors down. So it was easy enough for me to say, uh, sure, I can meet you here at 12.30. Sure, I can meet you here at 2.30. Sure, I can meet you here at 5.30. Because I just have to walk out my door and walk three doors down and show folks uh, the apartment. But then sometimes people wouldn't show up. So I'd be standing there looking at my watch, you know, it's like, and there was no texting and stuff like that back then. That was like, like 17 years ago. People were just, they had, you had cell phones, but there was no, you know, they didn't have your number, they forgot your number, or they couldn't text you and say, I'm gonna be 20 minutes late, they have to call. A lot of people, they're gonna be late, they don't, they feel bad, so they don't wanna call, and, or they don't wanna come, or they change their mind. They don't, they won't even call you. Like, I would constantly, like, after like half an hour, I'd call this person, and I would say, uh, we had an appointment to look at the apartment, are you, Later, you coming? Oh no! And they would say, "We've got, we found another place." Oh well, thanks for letting me know. I've been standing here. They don't know that I live next door, and it's not that inconvenient, but it still is inconvenient. Uh, so there was a lot of that happening all the, like all constantly. I'm not saying people are terrible, but it, there's just a bit of a lack of consideration or common sense, which used to just make me nuts, because. I would never do that to somebody, but not everybody's like me. So, um, so anyway, so I'm showing the apartment, telling people my my wife's water breaks, we gotta go. And then if there was other appointments too, like if her water broke and say, 
in the middle of the day and I'd had set up five appointments and there's three in the afternoon and her water breaks at noon or something. I can't, I gotta cancel those appointments, right? Which is fine, it's fine, I'm having a kid. Uh, but still, so what I did eventually clue into was not to set up appointments with people. And here is a golden nugget. And as soon as I started implementing this, uh, the whole renting process changed. And it was one of the best things I did in terms of how to get uh, people to see the place, do it in an orderly, time efficient way, and also create demand. So, um, what I would do is I would just put one time. I would say, in the in uh, if whatever responses I got, or also in the listing, I would say, showings are going to be on Saturday at 10.30, or Saturday at 9.30. Uh, and that's it, 9.30 to 10, I will be showing the apartment. You can come at that time. Now, one, I picked mornings uh, because I had, I wanted the rest of my day to do stuff. And I also think sometimes if you want a place bad enough and you really want it, you're going to get up on a Saturday and come out to see it. It's, it tells a lot about the type of people that are going to rent the place. So like, I wouldn't say something ridiculous, like, you know, 7.30 on a Saturday morning, but like 9.30, 10, yeah, you can, you can get down here and look at a place. So I'd set that early time and so I could have time to do other things during the day and then I would just set one time 9 30 10 that's the only window there's no other time and so what would happen is people would if I they would email me and say I'm coming so and so time I'll be there at 9 30 I'll be there at 9 30 or 9 45 etc so then I would get a list and go okay I've got about 10, 15 responses that say there's like 15 people are gonna come and look at it between 9, 30 and 10. And I knew from that there'd be drop-offs, right? I would email them back, I'd just be polite and say, confirmed, see you at this address between 9, 30 and 10. Uh, let yourself in, I'll be inside. And what would happen is inevitably, say if I got 15 responses, five, five of them that said they were gonna show up, didn't show up, so then it's down to 10. The other 10 that do show up, two of them are late. They don't get there between 9.30 and 10. They get there at about 10 after 10. So then I've got about eight folks, seven to eight folks that are there. And what happened is I would let them all in to see the apartment. They could all go look around. I would stand in the corner or outside. I said, go have a look. Do you have any questions? Just ask on your way out, but it, I'll let you guys go look. So the magic of this whole thing is what you're doing is you're creating demand. Like there's other people there seeing that other people are looking at it. And then it makes everybody think that, holy shit, there's competition here. I got to get, if I really want this apartment, I better have my stuff together and tell this guy I want it and do it right away. It's kind of like when you're looking at, um, if you're on Airbnb or VRBO or any of those kind of vacation rental sites, when you look at a place, they do this thing, there's a little clicker in the bottom that says, four people have looked at this place in the last 24 hours. Which makes you, gives you a sense of urgency going, man, I better get this place because I don't want somebody else to get it. There's other people looking at this thing, right? So, um, so that would create this, this sense of uh, urgency and demand. And then I have all of a sudden I've had a bunch of people that really want the place. So say I, you get seven people in there, then I'd get like maybe three or four that really want it. The other ones are going, oh, we're still looking, but thanks very much. Or they just don't like what are, sure, fine, right? But those other three or four are now, they're clamoring to get the place and they're competing. And it's all a case of now we've got three to four prospective tenants that uh, really, really want the place. And they're gonna do whatever they can to, to make me rent, rent them. 
and it was a great, great, great tactic. I learned a lot like that first year and it was, that was one of the big, big things. After that, I never made appointments. My life got so simple when it came to finding the right tenants. Uh, there's a few other tips, uh, handy tips and stuff like that, that I can give you all as part of this. I'm going to do a series on, on, uh, how to find the right tenants and looking for tenants. And there's some things like if, if you know some, they don't teach you the stuff in books. That's the other thing. You kind of have to learn it as you go. And as I was amazed at how, you know, how much I learned in all these little hacks, these tenant hacks that really, really worked and continue to work for me. Uh, but it, it changed, it drastically changed, uh, the way I found tenants and showed the apartment, etc. Okay. Hope this helps. Bless my millionaire out. Happy birthday, Quinn. Love you, buddy. <clears throat>